five. What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, I'm not having a great day, honestly. How about you? You know, things of I'm just reminiscing about my college days and, you know, dropping out. It's sad, you know, but it couldn't be helped. Why couldn't you dropping out of college be helped? Well, you know, this whole Ukraine crisis, it's, it's everywhere. It's everything. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it couldn't have been avoided. It's It was already in motion. Right. Uh, same thing, you know, I'm, I'm actually bummed out today, too, because my dog died because of the Ukraine crisis. Mm-hmm. That sucks. I know. It's it's awful. Oh, my God. Amala. Oh, hey, Amala. Sorry, Where guys. Have you been? I'm, I'm really sorry I'm late. I, I ran out of gas in my car. I went to the gas station to get more, and uh, I, I couldn't because of the Ukraine crisis. Had to walk. Ah. Uh, Terrible. I hate when that happens. Yeah. The dang Ukraine crisis. It couldn't have been avoided. No, it couldn't, it have, been couldn't have been avoided. Have been avoided. No. My mom killed my dog because of the Ukraine crisis. Yeah, you know, I've been waiting all day just trying to figure out what Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion thought about what we should do with these foreign affairs. It's really uh, terrorizing my life right now. Mm-hmm. Well, I was distracted because I got pulled over and cop gave me a ticket because of the Ukraine crisis. I know. I was speeding, but it was also the Ukraine crisis's fault. <laughs> I know. I got fat with all this McDonald's because of the Ukraine crisis. Mm. My house literally got foreclosed on because of the Ukraine crisis. My house lit on fire because of the Ukraine crisis. Wow. <laughs> Putin. Space lasers. <laughs> My house got shot with a laser. <laughs> Because of the Ukraine crisis, ladies and gentlemen. The world exploded. It is it's the ultimate scapegoat these days to blame the, the Russian and Ukraine crisis uh, on everything. Yeah, everything. my dog ate my homework. <laughs> Ukraine crisis. <laughs> it's the new one. It really is the new my dog ate my homework. Yes, yes. Sorry, my paper was late. Yeah. Ukraine. Guys, welcome to Will and Amala. We will be touching on the Russia-Ukraine crisis and how it's been affecting the U.S. economy somehow for the past year. <laughs> If you want to share how you've been victimized by the Ukraine crisis, drop it in the comments. Right. In the comments down below, how has your life been utterly ruined and demolished by the Russia-Ukraine crisis? Uh, So we're going to touch on that a little bit, and particularly a story put out by CBS News. Also, Will and Taylor have been coming in hot today because Lord of the Rings is under attack. They have a new, uh, it's a series, right, coming out? Or is it just a movie? Oh, it's a series. A billion dollars. Several seasons of a series. Ah, and it seems as though Lord of the Rings has been... Been wokeified. Boo, boo, hiss, hiss, tisk, tisk. Uh, we'll be discussing that. Plus, is Apple Siri going to now have a gender neutral voice, all in the name of representation? <laughs> Did KFC <laughs> tweet out <laughs> the picture of a fried drumstick uh, for Black History Month? We're also going to fact check that and see if that's true. I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. John Oliver on his uh, nightly show talked about critical race theory. We'll be going through his arguments there. Plus a middle school telling their students how to prepare for BLM protests. Very important stuff. Also, is the government going to be asking you to switch to a digital wallet that is easily controlled by the Federal Reserve? Good questions we should be asking. Plus, our fun segment today is going to be overrated, underrated. You guys submitted things through my Instagram, at the Amla Benobi, at the Will Witt, at Taylor Trandall. And we will feature you all and uh, guess whether or not your things are overrated or underrated. Let's get into... This CBS Real quick, news. we had someone on the new Will and Amla live channel, which you should be subscribed to on yes. YouTube, by the way, comment yes. that they caught COVID because of the Ukraine crisis. <laughs> That's true. No, I got myocarditis because of the Ukraine crisis. <laughs> Ukraine crisis gave me blood clots. <laughs> Oh, we'll have more of those, I guess, throughout the show. More Ukraine crisis. We'll keep an eye out. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep an eye out for what you guys are saying. You guys are uh, are, are pretty good with the, with the comedy in the comments. Let's look at this uh, CBS <coughs> News tweet that was put out, uh, which is why we did our opening skit. CBS News writes, The U.S. economy has been hit with increased gas prices, inflation, and supply chain issues due to... The Ukraine crisis. Take a shot every time you say the Ukraine crisis. You'd be blacked out about five minutes into this show. Uh, But yeah, this is what CBS News put out. This was the the tweet here. So the inflated gas prices, the inflation, and the supply chain issues that we've been experiencing now for, what, uh, 11 months? nearly uh they're all due to the ukraine crisis uh something that is weeks old in in in, in at least american news media so very interesting you actually can go into this article and read about it and it's a lot less salacious than the actual tweet that they put out uh but i want to read 
this uh, particular section. Although many Americans may prefer that the U.S. stay out of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the brewing violence and political fallout are already hurting their wallets. Gasoline prices, which have hit an eight-year high, could surge even further if the hostilities escalate or if the U.S. lawmakers pass another round of sanctions. So it's not our fault. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not the fault of your government. It's not the fault of the powers that be that our economy has been hit so hard uh, during these times. Russia and Ukraine did it. Right. No, it's not that we printed billions and billions of dollars for meaninglessness, for things that could have been avoided by just ending lockdowns, ending mandates. It's because of Russia and Ukraine and their stuff happening right now on the border. Countries Mm -hmm. that are in Eastern Europe that we don't even need to worry about, but somehow all of this is them. All this proves is that the mainstream media is the enemy of the people, that they are essentially a wing of the left wing and say, we are going to defend the left no matter what, even if we have to lie, even if we have to say terrible things about our country and and the people who are uh, living inside of it. And because of that, I don't think anyone has trust in the media. I think they just did a poll. I think, it, was it Pew Research? Who, who did the poll? Or maybe it was mm-hmm. Rasmussen. Only 7% of Americans actually trust the mainstream media. Wow. Good 7%. Sign, though. I mean, and that's much lower than it's been, you know, historically in the past. It's makes sense, though. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, how could you trust it if you're reading this? And this is something that we all know about and we've all heard about in the, the last few weeks, but suddenly all of the issues that we've been experiencing in our economy are due to this. They lie, they lie. And and funnily enough, right in, term, right in time for uh, midterm elections. So it, it looks like the whole narrative is just starting to crumble and they're trying to blame whatever they can uh, while all while trying to keep the blame off of themselves and off of the things that they've done here in this country. If they could, they would wipe away the past two years, all of which they've set in place for you and for your life, and say, it's not our fault. It's the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Yeah. But all these people are trying to do is deny basic science. I mean, when it comes to what's happening right now in Russia-Ukraine, a lot of this is about energy that's happening that, that, that Europe needs from Russia. Okay, If you know, the European Union gets 35% of its natural gas from Russia. That's a lot. They got the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, the Nord Stream 1 pipeline, a lot of stuff that brings natural gas into Europe. Okay, so it's a big deal. That's 35 percent. Used to have coal, lots of coal plants, had nuclear plants. Germany just shut down three of its nuclear plants because apparently nuclear energy is so bad. They don't really do coal anymore. And so now they're all big on renewable energies, solar power, wind energy, all of this. And because those things don't really work in the wintertime in all these these northern European countries, now I think there's a very clear idea of why Putin waited for Germany to close those nuclear plants before he made this decision on the border in Ukraine. Because he knows how dependent these European countries are on Russia for their energy. So these people are denying basic facts, basic reality, and basic science when it comes to the the climate crisis or the, the energy crisis that they have manufactured themselves by listening to Greta Thunberg and everything she's talked about. That's what this is about when it comes to Europe. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I, I'm sure this this current crisis is going to affect us in some ways, and they go through the ways that it could, you know. Uh, and America has more hydrogen energy than than Europe does, so we're a little bit better off, but we're still going to feel it in our pockets. I mean, crude oil mm-hmm. has gone up to about $100 a barrel. When, when this administration took office, it was at about $40 a barrel. Now right. it's at $100. That's insane. That is insane. Mm-hmm. And this is, who does this affect the most? It affects hard working class Americans. And who are a lot of working hard cla- hard working class Americans? A lot of minorities of these people. The left says that they want to help these minorities and help them get get better and get back on their feet, get jobs and everything. But you're hurting these people more because every time that they have to drive to work, drive to go see their parent, whatever, they're hurting at the gas station more. And not just at the gas station, but with their rent, with their food, with their energy costs. I yep. mean, many places in Europe, they're saying the energy costs are going to go up 54 percent within the next year. It, it's staggering. It's staggering. And it's all manufactured by people who are dumb. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's that's a, the major that point. The technical term? That's yes. the technical term. Listen. <laughs> that's I got, the legal terminology. Yeah, if, yeah, if you need to look it up, I know it's, it's difficult. I'm letting you guys in on a secret. These people are dumb. Okay? <laughs> They're not smart. If you take climate advice from Greta Thunberg, like, you're not that smart. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate situation. I, I just can't I just can't imagine that people can look at this and, and not see the cracks in, in the logic, not see the cracks in the dogma, not see the, the blatant lies and propaganda that are being just shoved towards you.
Well, you have to see the cracks because if you look at it on a larger scale of inflation in, in general across the world, you know, you'll hear all these people, you hear the World Economic Forum people say, oh, this is a, a world inflation thing. It's not just in America. This is affecting the whole world. Oh, really? What are the top five countries with the worst inflation? You got Turkey, Russia, uh, Argentina, and the United States of America. Okay, those are not countries that we have really much in common with when it comes to how our economies are, are do business. Mm -hmm. And then what are some of the other ones? Germany is not having nearly the inflation we are. France isn't. Uh, these other countries around Europe aren't having it. It's America. It's an American problem because of what our government has done purposely, specifically to cripple the American people as part of the Great Reset. It, it's it's all part of the plan. It's not a worldwide problem. It is a manufactured crisis that they have created and now are trying to blame it on Russia, Ukraine. You will own nothing and you will be happy, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, gosh, 2030. Tucker <laughs> I can't had, wait. I don't know if you guys watched Tucker last night, but Tucker no. had such a great segment about Putin and all this stuff going on. And, and he's asking about, you know, what has Putin done to any of us? Has he called you a racist? Mm. Has Putin shut down your businesses? Has, has Putin... Uh, made you wear a mask and get vaccinated to go everywhere you want to go. Sure. You know, it's like, no. And you're blaming all these things on Putin. you got Canada right up door doing all these things. Yeah, it's pretty terrible. Right. It's you're see you're seeing sort of a schism. I've been seeing a lot of different conservative commentators take very different uh, takes on, on this current crisis. A lot of them saying well, there's no reason for us to be talking about this. It's a psyop. It's just being created for, for us to have some sort of crisis that we are thinking about all the time. And others saying that we should be sanctioning them and going after this and getting involved in this. It's just it's really interesting how you can see something just be curated to cause division. Yeah, I am no fan of. Vladimir Putin. I think he does a lot of <laughs> evil things, and I'm not here to defend sure. Vladimir Putin. But it seems pretty obvious that Vladimir Putin, the people of Russia, have a very nationalist agenda, a very orthodox agenda, things that we don't have here in America. And that way of life to the radical progressive left, they hate that. And so when they see Russia doing that, and that's the way the people live their life in Russia, they hate that. They hate that that's the way these people live and that they're proud of being Russian. Right. That, that's, that's, that's exactly how they are. But then they see Canada, which is apparently a democracy, apparently a democracy. Oh, but apparently. because Canada loves Black Lives Matter and gay pride flags, everything OK is up. That's fine. That's totally fine up there. Right. So it's a total hypocrisy, because when you're seeing real action sanctions, when you're seeing the, the sanctions that Canada is taking against its own people being worse than the sanctions that Russia is doing against Ukraine, all these same types of things, then you really have a problem, a conflict of morals. Doesn't matter because it doesn't fit the narrative, William. Now we're going to move on. Uh, <laughs> Do you guys want to hear a couple more of the, yes, give the me Ukraine, more. Crisis, Ukraine crisis? Ukraine Things that it has caused. Yes. Unavoidable, guys. Yes. These were unavoidable. Unavoidable. I know. Um, my baby's crying because of the Ukraine crisis. That's pebbles. <laughs> um, Ukraine crisis made me have constipation. Thank you, Jeb. <laughs> Thank so, you. So Madeline that fell down the real. stairs because of the Ukraine crisis. Yeah, that could have been real. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Um, Will lost his mustache because of the Ukraine crisis. <laughs> oh, that's devastating for Will. Yeah. Tragic. I, uh, most people would say the Ukraine crisis would make me grow a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> the last one crisis are. is so bad. That Alfie says me. Kanye is dropping a new album because of the Ukraine crisis. <laughs> oh, hopefully better than the last one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we all know how Wolf is about that last album. Terrible. Uh, okay, let's move into Lord of the Rings. You guys have been really passionate talking about this today. Will caused uh, a, a bit of a ripple on uh, Twitter tweeting this out. The new Lord of the Rings show should not have black actors as elves slash dwarves. Tolkien made Middle-earth as uh, mythos of... English history, and he described in detail what the characters look like. If you want black elves slash dwarves, go make your own story. Don't bastardize the original. Well, 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 well. Yes, uh, that's true. So a lot of people came after you. Wilfred yes. Riley responded, agree or disagree. Mm -hmm. An account known as the, uh, what is it? Racist, Racist watchdog, watchdog. Gave you a woof, woof, woof. Yes. In the comments down below. Yes. So the racist watchdog is, a, I think they have like 700,000 followers on Twitter. And they'll go through and quote tweet racist, quote unquote, racist tweets and bark mm -hmm. like a dog. This is our political discourse, uh, 2022. Here we go. Um, they've done that to a lot of my tweets before, too. Apparently, I'm very racist, according to this dog. They've Apparently. done it all the time. Uh, but a lot of blue checkmark leftist Twitter people all came after me for it, which was expected. I knew that was going to happen. Um, but they did it without ever really... You know, explaining why what I'm saying is racist. They say it's just because I don't want black people represented in movies and TV or it doesn't matter because it's a fake fantasy land. But 
I, I want to, before I get into this, I want to play the video that we have from these yes. people from Amazon because there were a lot of conservative people when I talked about this yesterday. A lot of people who are more conservative and they came out and said, Will, you're, this isn't the, the fight. You're making a big deal out about this. It's fine. It's just some black elves and black dwarves in this new Amazon Lord of the Rings show. Uh, just, it's just a badass Galadriel. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And now... Let's let's watch this video. Yeah, so Amazon put out a video uh, bringing together some super fans of Lord of the Rings to discuss the new super Rings fans. Rings of Power series, and here's just a little compilation of what they had to say. Special thank you to my guests, the Fellowship of Influencers, Chanel, Joel, and Kelsey. We're getting like more diversity, 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 much more diversity, being inclusive, representative, representation, black elf, female dwarf. Wow. Never saw people of my color. So amazing. Women in it, women, more female representation. I wasn't represented, my disability, my queerness wasn't represented. I'm a girl, Galadriel. Yeah, I love Galadriel. It's Galadriel. 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 I'm already yeah. obsessed. Cool. Stunning and beautiful. Corruption and manipulation. Manipulation. Corrupt people. Corrupt him. Be like, I can change him. She like, and I was like, like, it's like, it's like, like. <laughs> okay, I'll just pause there. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead, William. If you want to, I'll first of all explain the differences that are going to be uh, set forth in this new Lord of the Rings series. What is different about? Okay, it. so Galadriel, I don't want to get too deep into the Tolkien lore because it's no, going to bore just, everyone. Just explain in, in general but I'll, terms. I'll do. I'll be general. Okay, they have a black. Dwarf. This is just what we know so far, okay? They have this black dwarf woman. She doesn't have a beard. They're supposed to have beards. Also, they live underground. What would make them black if they live underground, okay? That's just, you wouldn't be black if you <laughs> lived goodness. underground. A black elf. He's supposed to have long hair. He's supposed to be uh, olive-colored skin. He's black and has a buzz cut. You got Galadriel, who you guys would recognize from the first films, who is now this warrior chick who's angry and brash and doesn't take no for an answer and is kicking people's butt. That's, that's the new Galadriel, which she's 5,000 years old at the time, but apparently not to them. She's just a teenager. And those are some of the, the major changes that they have right now. And so, again, going back to what I said about conservatives not saying this is a big deal and saying it's fine that you have these people in. Go look at what these people are saying, these people who are these super fans who Amazon brings in to represent what this show is supposed to be about to people who are watching it. Of course, this is a big deal. Okay, I wrote a whole piece about this on my Substack where I went into a lot greater detail. It came out a couple of hours ago. But this is bigger. This whole thing is bigger than just coming and saying, oh, there's a black elf in a TV show. Okay, it's not the end of the world that there's a black elf in a Lord of the Rings thing. Okay, I get that. I'm not coming and saying, no, you shouldn't have these black people because they're black or anything. That's not the point. The point is, is that when you sacrifice what the original work was about in any capacity, whether it's about the story or the visuals or the characters, any of that kind of stuff, then you are ruining what it was supposed to be about in the first place okay and you have conservatives who come on and say no no it's fine you can have black dwarves you can have black elves you can have tranny goblins whatever it is that you guys want to have but as soon as you do that then you're giving them the upper hand okay and i use the comparison that it's like the the statues of 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 confederate uh, soldiers and, and generals that we have now taken down in America, where the left says, hey, we need to take these people down. And conservatives said, okay, it's not that big of a deal. We're going to take them down. It's fine. Oh, you're mad about us taking con Confederate statues down? It's not that big of a deal. Well, what are they doing now? Now they're taking down statues of Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and they're doing that because you said it was okay at the beginning. You said, okay, we can deny history, we can deny truth, and as soon as you do that, you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. And that's what they're doing with this Lord of the Rings show. You shouldn't give them an inch. You shouldn't allow them to change the source material in any respect, because once you do that, then you sacrifice what it was originally about. I'm one of the biggest Tolkien fans in the world. I've read all of the works. I, I watch all the videos. I've seen the movies. I just watched one of the movies two nights ago. I've seen them hundreds of times. <clears throat> I love Tolkien. And it shows clearly that they don't respect the work that they are trying to make a show about. And that in turn means that they don't respect you and they hate you. They want to put their messaging into the show instead of preserving what Tolkien meant to do by it. In case in point about that, I mean, Alma, if you can go into that video that we just showed, the 12 minute 30 mark, okay. um, they compare quotes from the the one of the women behind this new Amazon production versus something Peter Jackson said and how they approached um, honoring the lore or taking it a step forward or however um, you want to describe it. And I think it, it's very telling uh, the, the way in which they both describe their different approaches. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. 
thought about this story his entire life. Remember this from Lindsay Weber, the executive producer of the Rings of Power and former Bad Reboot employee. It felt only natural to us that an adaptation of Tolkien's work would reflect what the world actually looks like. In terms of the thematic material, we didn't want to put any of our own baggage. I mean, we had no interest in putting our messages in, into this movie, but we thought that we should honor Tolkien by putting his messages into it. And we thought he cared about things. We, you know, he, you know, the countryside and the, and the, and, and, and the rise of evil, and and he he cared passionately about certain issues. And we thought what we should do to honor him is to make sure that 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 his what he cared about ends up in the movie. That's what we tried to do. Those prophetic. Okay. Those are the two. So you, quotes. yeah, you listen to these. These obviously, it's it's very clear. One of them, it's an honest work of art where you're trying to be faithful to the intent of the original author and honor what they created and bring it to life on screen. You only get one chance to do that every however many years with when you have the the budget the size of Amazon or uh, who with New Line that made mm -hmm. the the original films. And Amazon had bought. They spent a billion dollars to buy the rights and to make and produce their own adaptation of this series and all of the the world only gets this uh, uh, interpretation of it built to scale and so with that one opportunity what do they do immediately what's the first thing that they do they uh, incorporate all these woke themes in it and modern narratives and put their own politics into it and that is I think is what uh, people are reacting to and having an adverse reaction to yeah okay it's just it's the worst when people say that it's fine. It's not a big deal. I hate it when people say it's not a big deal. Because if it's not a big deal, then why change it in the first place? Why not just leave it how it was? But, why not just leave it to the original? So I want to ask, what is the big deal here? So hold on. So my view of this is, and my view of anything, if they re recreated something that I really love and changed the race of people in it, I wouldn't necessarily care about that. I care about the dogma that comes along with it. So if for both of you guys, if Lord of the Rings was recreated and it was recreated with the same exact scripts, the same thematic values and all of that, but a character that was once white is now black, would you be upset by that? Of course. Why? But because there's no the dogma that comes with it. Because the character it. in the original is white. Why change it? If you're going, if they, if they, if you knew that the character was white in the original and someone who was recreating came in and said, we are going to make them black, there is a reason for that. There's yeah, a reason you can't just make art for art's sake. The la pula is is art for art's sake. You can't just you can't just do that. You have to make every single person who creates art is putting something into that art. So if you change the race of a character, you are not just doing it out of nothingness. It doesn't have to be some woke thing potentially, but you are doing it for a reason. And for anything like that, if you are trying to make a, a, an adaptation that is original or that is faithful to the source material, then you don't change that. Just like if you're making a, 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 a something where the characters are, are black and you change one of the actors to white, so, shouldn't do that either. So if they came out with a black James Bond or a black Spider-Man, you would have a problem with that. That would be problematic because well, that would, character would, has always that been white. Me. Yeah. Uh, I don't know but, as much about those I know more about James Bond. I don't know so much about Spider-Man and all. Yeah, but those characters have, have traditionally been white, and well, now they're black. It's not about black. traditionally. It's about you have one story that is a source material that says this is sure. how it is. And in the source material, Spider-Man is white, Superman's white, James Bond's white. So if that person is now black, is that problematic? That's why I'm saying I think there's a there's a sort of a differentiation that we need to make between making people making new characters that are now black characters and now like Galadriel is clearly a, a feminist narrative of putting this young black woman who's now suddenly strong and a warrior. That's dogma. But if well, they, didn't you had, make a, they didn't make Galadriel black. Okay, well. She's still white. She's a, so she's a feminist character. So that's there's feminist dogma in there. But if they took a regular character who's been in this series since the beginning, it's still the same lines, it's still the same character expression, it's still the same personality, but suddenly they're black. I don't understand where the problem is. I think it's more like, it's it's about why you're doing it, and if there were any question as to why they're doing it, they are settling that from the get-go by hiring this, uh, you know, social justice warrior panel of influencers to talk about, sure. harp on how important the diversity is. And so the how dogma the is the problem. The dogma is the problem, for, for me at least. It's it's not, and then also, I mean, you could you could also make the argument that Tolkien's original work is is sort of um, it's based in his study of Norse mythology of uh, the middle uh, the the Middle Ages and uh, 
Anglo-Saxon culture. Yeah, Anglo-Saxon culture. And so it's more of a diversion from something like Spider-Man, which is like a total fantasy world. And there have been multiple iterations of that that whole universe already um, through the decades. Whereas... You, again, like the Jackson films were the first time this was ever really brought. I mean, there was like the BBC animated version in the 70s, but right. like, this is the first time this has ever been brought to life on cinema. And so it's important to like, hey, deliver this to the world in, in cinematic form. What does that look like? So he did a good job staying true to the faithful and not injecting politics to it, which Amazon front and center, first thing that they're doing and openly celebrating it on their own YouTube channel is saying, hey, this is all about diversity. It's all about feminism. It's all about these woke modern things. Okay. And that is what the part so the that frustrates me. The dog was the me. problem. Yeah. And and another point to, to be made um, that I think speaks to what you're talking about is like there's a what are the the race of men called who are like dark skinned that um, Rodrum the Rodrum so there are there's like a, a race of dark skinned people who you could easily cast black characters in and they're actually made some in the, the Return of the King you can see some some black characters that are in the film and like no no one would have any problem with that because it fits right within the lore so it's not about having no black people in mm-hmm. in Middle Earth mm-hmm. it's just about being true to what the, the original lore okay right. Fair enough. Yeah, I can see where if, if something was rewritten and, and suddenly there's all this dogma and there's all this subliminal messaging about diversity and inclusion and feminism and all this stuff, where I would take issue with it. But if it's simply a, you know, a, a recreation, which obviously this is not because we've we've gone through all the dogma that they're having this. But uh, if somebody just recreated something that I love and suddenly there's a black character in it or a character that I once knew as white is now black, I don't think that I would have a problem. Yeah, but it's uh, the left... If you were to take a, a historically black character in any movie, TV show, something mm-hmm. like that, and you were to make that character white, it would be the end of the world for the people on the left. Mm. They would care so much and say, you are whitewashing it, you are destroying it, and all of this. That is what they would say. There is no doubt. You would hear about it for months and months. So if they're going to get so upset about someone whitewashing a show by having a character that might have been black and now they're white or something like that, then it should be the same way the other way around. I don't, I I think... Because then you're giving them the inch, and so then they take the mile. But if we acknowledge that that reaction is bad, why is why is your reaction not bad to this? You know, if we acknowledge that a, a leftist being mad about a, a white character or white or complaining of whitewashing, why is it okay to say, oh, well, you're putting... Well, I think it's in part because in Hollywood, it's, it's always a one-way street, and... You know, the, there's right now. This is the state it's of Hollywood. It's anti-white. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, it's you only ever see this forced diversity everywhere, and and so it going the other way would not even enter in the realm of possibility. So it's just them doing that also to what is kind of a sacred work of Western civilization. Sure. I mean, it's one of the greatest works of English literature in the, uh, certainly in the 20th century. Um, if not the greatest. Yeah. I mean, right. and if you ask Will. And so to, to, to sort of, and that's what the other thing is, it feels like they purchased the rights to this great transcendent epic work that has so much cultural significance and so much weight to it. Mm-hmm. And then used that as a veneer for their ideology in film form. And then are yes. and sort of, bastardizing it in that way if we can use that word right I'm, I'm not defending this certain instance of it but i'm saying there are going to be instances in the future where we simply swap out white characters for black characters i mean historically hollywood is is uh very very yeah, and I, white. I, I, I wanted them so to cast idris elba as right. the next bond i mean he's no, a they, now, they of but, course yeah. will swap out white characters for black characters yes but they won't swap out black characters for white characters and there's a reason for that because hollywood is anti-white well there's also very few options to do that for i mean historically within hollywood i mean it's 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 pretty much known that in hollywood history most white people are going to get roles even if the roles are outside of the white race like we have white people who played black people white people who played asians uh so as far as the moving the dial most likely the dial is going to move towards black characters you know white characters becoming black because we've set the historical precedent of white characters playing everybody. So, I mean, but there's there's all this representation. Like, black people are 13 percent of the population. Yet mm-hmm. on the top Billboard 100, they're four out of the ten top artists, right? And so, but still, they're still going to replace white characters with black characters. Sure. And if you can't do it the other way around, then no, it is not fair in that circumstance. Because I'm, if you can't do it the other way, then there is a double standard. I, well, I'll, I agree that there is a double standard, but you would say that the left is going to get mad that you replaced a black character with a white character, and that's wrong for them to get mad about that. So why are you mad about it in the other instance? It's, that's my question. If you are mad no, about dogma... No, I'm they have to be mad about it. But they would be, you know what right. I mean? Right, I'm yes. saying they would. And Which so is not right. 
which is not right. They should not be mad about that. So why are we mad about it in the opposite, in the opposite sense, if that makes sense? I, because we have to hold them accountable. If yes. they are going to live that way and say, okay, this is not okay, but it's okay if we do it, then we have to say, well, actually, that's not okay that you do it. And it's not okay for either way. And so we have to defend it and say, no, it's not okay either way, right? If they're going to say it's okay to replace white people with black people, but not okay to replace black people with white people, then we have to say, no, that is also not okay. I don't know. It just feels to me like we're saying something is morally wrong because they do it. But because they're doing it, we have to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it doesn't... No, I'm not saying to do it. I'm not saying sure. to replace black people with white people. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if they're saying it's okay, they're talking a little bit in circles. Yeah, I know it is. It's okay, so if circles. they're saying it's okay to replace <laughs> white people with black people, then we have to say, no, you can't add these other characters and replace white people with black people because it's not right. Okay, so that you would wouldn't do it the other way. So for you, that would apply with like a James Bond or a Spider Man, where for Taylor, it wouldn't apply for that. That Again, would apply I for think, you. I think context on the lore matters for what it is. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So I think the we're, Ukraine we're on, crisis drove this conversation <laughs> off the rails. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think we're just on we're on three different things. Like Taylor is very much okay. It, the dogma matters, but also source material matters. I'm very much just the dogma matters, and you're saying dogma, source material, and whether or not it goes both ways matters. I think there's it's, just varying scales about how much people care about this. I'm just like very dedicated to to what the the ulterior motives of all these things are, and there's always an ulterior motive to all of this. And they always tell you it's not a big deal. That's what they always say. But it's always a big deal. Because if it was the other way, then it would always be the worst thing in the world to them. If you replaced Black Panther with a white guy, I mean, it'd be the end of the world. The left would, their heads would explode and they'd be all over Twitter every single day. Oh, you know? well, yeah. I mean, I, I think that's definitely true. And unfortunately, I think it's a hole that people who believe in progressive uh, ideology have dug for themselves with things like affirmative action and, and mm -hmm. restorative justice and things like that. And I talk about this a lot is what you've done by moving these campaigns is you've robbed you've robbed people of color because now, as as judged by this conversation, when people of color are put in positions that they were not put in before, people immediately question your motive on it because you've gone with this campaign of affirmative action and restorative justice and all these things. Uh, uh, and taking back power, so to say. So now, virtually every field that a black person now starts to show up in, people are going to question whether or not you're there based on merit or you're there because of a diversity quota or because you have a DEI officer working at your uh, at your corporation. And it's extremely unfortunate. And uh, yeah, I just want people to recognize that when they when they go and support things like affirmative action or diversity hiring, this is what you've done. This is what you've created. This sort of conflict. And exactly for no right. reason, no reason. It should not exist. Right. It really shouldn't. No, that's exactly right. Uh, next, is diversity coming to your Siri voice? Because Apple Siri is reportedly getting a new gender neutral sounding voice. And they all want you to know that the member, uh, the, the person who recorded Siri's voice is also a member of the LGBTQ plus community. Just had to, had to let you know. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens when you make elves black. <laughs> oh then this happens. I need to know who my imaginary non-existent <sighs> AI wants to have sex with. Right. But I'm very grateful that Apple took the time to issue a statement to clarify that for all of us. Right. Exactly. It's like why? Because identity politics has to be the driver in literally everything that you do, everything you consume, everything that you are a part of. I have to know. Uh, the different intersectional identities of each person involved in everything that comes into my life. And th this underscores the point of the last segment, though, too. It's like the, the question is, well, why do you care? Why do you care? It's like, well, because you care and you're infusing this into everything. It's now in my phone pocket um, and when my when my Siri talks to me like that. I care because you make it so big of a deal that one of the richest companies in the world has to issue a statement saying we're making a voice uh, that's going to be recorded by an LGBTQ person. Like no one cares about the sexual preferences of the imaginary person in your phone. It's a robot. It's a robot. Right. So why do you have to tell us that the voice recording is a cell? And then like, okay, well, why isn't it a little person uh, voice? You know, why mm -hmm. isn't it right. a, a trans disabled little person who's uh, Blasian? How can we get more intersectional mm -hmm. in our, in Where does our it series stop? And then If you take it to the logical extreme though, it's like that, 
that according to their logic, that needs to be part of the representation. That's why the LGBTQ keeps growing with the, mm-hmm. you know, two IA plus plus whatever. Um, you keep because the intersectional boxes never stop. And when you think like this, it just creates more and more confusion and and chaos. It's not a big deal, bro. Come on, bro. Just it's just a phone screen, bro. It's just telling you it's gay, bro. Don't worry about it, bro. <laughs> it's just a beardless dwarf. Yeah, bro. <laughs> anyway. Oh, we just wanted to touch on that for a little bit. Yeah, it's like, not much I don't more care, you but you, it's it's just another yet another example of them forcing this stuff everywhere. They yeah, can. it's just interesting to Forced. see what people hold valuable, and and that is one of those things. So it's just interesting. Uh, I want to move on to this very very funny story. Fact check. Here's the title: KFC did not tweet a drumstick image for Black History Month. <laughs> Okay, so I want to show you guys this image. Here's KFC. It's a drumstick, and behind it in shadow is a black power civil rights fist. And the tweet says, I hear you, I see you, and I stand with you. Hashtag Black History Month. Wait, I don't get it. You'll take a look. Just take Can a look. It is a fried chicken drumstick for Black History Month. Is that supposed to be racist? I mean, it could be construed as just being not not necessarily no, racist, but just such a blatant stereotype of, of black like people. Some Kool-Aid and watermelon on the time. <laughs> but don't worry, guys. This was not tweeted out by KFC in honor of Black History Month. It was actually tweeted out or put on the Instagram of KFC Trinidad and Tobago in 2020 for Emancipation Day, a public holiday for celebrating the end of slavery. <laughs> So, the their, so their fact check was that, guys, fact check, KFC didn't post this image, but they but, did post this image. It right. was just a local one, and it wasn't for Black History Month. It was for Emancipation Day. Yeah. But we needed to thank you for clarifying that. Reuters, this right. is very important journalism work. Exactly. But you know people are just going to read the headline and go, well, KFC, oh, KFC did not tweet a drumstick for Black History Month, whatever. But actually, KFC <laughs> did tweet a <laughs> drumstick well, They shouldn't have brought it up. Day. They should have just left it alone. Uh, Why did they even do this fact check in the first place? Well, because it went viral. Because it went viral. Because somebody did doctor oh, like a, a tweet. like a fake one. Yeah, somebody did doctor a tweet saying KFC tweeted this from their main account for Black History Month. Which wasn't entirely true. It wasn't entirely true. It was an Instagram post by KFC. It's very important that we yeah. get this yeah. right. It's like that latest fake Ben Shapiro tweet. You guys see that one? No. No? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. What did it say? Something perverted. Oh, and it was But it was fake. going all over, and it almost, it sounded somewhat like how he talks. And you know, I everyone don't, was putting Did the fact checkers over. ever check fact check that one? No, they didn't fact check that one. Yeah, of course not, because it was like a meme against Ben Shapiro. Right. Of course. Doesn't help so, them. One way street. Now, we might end up hitting on John Oliver tomorrow because it's quite a big segment and we kind of want to go through and debunk everything. But I did want to highlight um, John Oliver brings up Christopher Rufo in his uh, monologue about CRT, which ended up being 30 minutes he spent on his show talking about how CRT is really not being taught in schools. And even if it is, it's being done in a good way. And even though there are some bad teachers who teach it in a bad way, blah, blah, blah. But he brings up Christopher Rufo as uh, sort of this beacon of the anti-CRT movement, which he is. He's very much a front runner in it and says, you know, Christopher Rufo is cherry picking all these different schools who are who are putting out all these different um, CRT focused curriculums and teaching white kids that they're oppressors and black kids that they're oppressed. We have yet another example. And they're very much not cherry picked Uh, from nearly every state. Christopher Rufo has found schools that are engaging in this sort of rhetoric and teaching their children this and thousands of examples through the work that he's done uh, through diligent reading of uh, critical race theory source material, talking to uh, people about uh, debating critical race theory live on television all the time and speaking to the actual critical race theorist of the modern day and age. Uh, So here's what he found at Justice Page Middle School in Minneapolis. This is a flyer teaching uh, children in this middle school, giving them advice for how to protest and how to join Black Lives Matter protests. Here's one of the bullet points. When it comes to Black Lives Matter protests, if you're not black, remember that you're there to show your support and amplify black voices, especially in all caps, if you're white. Uh, If they're offering the megaphones for anyone to speak, it's not for you. You're here to listen and to show support. Do you hear that, Will and Taylor? I want to make sure because you're especially white. I am especially white. (laughs) I'm not using my voice, so 
We'll give a thumbs up over here. Yeah, good stuff. And it gives them on the side of this advice for protests. Take a friend. Make sure to cover yourself in undescript clothing. Don't wear these specific items. Jewelry, contacts, makeup. Bring contacts? S- yeah. Wait, who can't? Black people can't wear contacts or white people? It's just saying anybody who's going to attend a protest, don't wear these things at, at the contacts is for fear of tear gas, by the way. For these middle schoolers, for fear of tear gas, don't wear contacts in your eyes. Uh, see, my guess would have been it's like triggering for people with glasses because it's like an ableism. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same. <laughs> that could have also like, worked. The smoke from your Molotov cocktail <laughs> might affect your contact. Uh, also, make sure to bring snacks and water and bring a first aid kit. Be, pre- be prepared in case anyone gets hurt so you have a reliable ride home as well. Mm-hmm. Amazing pre- advice. Yeah, be prepared of... One of your cohorts assaults an elderly couple walking across the street. Right. Comrades, even. Uh, comrades. <laughs> Be ready to help. Yeah. Band-aids. This is amazing. But no, they're not teaching critical race theory in schools, ladies and gentlemen. That is a, that is a Republican right-wing extremist dog whistle, that one. Mm-hmm. No evidence whatsoever to prove None. that they're teaching it. We covered on the show a couple of weeks ago, there was a, a group of kindergartens that they were given picket signs, and they were marching them through the hallways with their masks on saying, Black Lives Matter. Right. It's just amazing. And there's this is one of thousands of examples. And it's amazing because in uh, in John Oliver's special, he shows all these parents, a compilation of parents going to their school boards and fighting against critical race theory. Of course, he clips the ones to make them look stupid. And he also only includes white parents. So it looks like this is just a this is a white value to be anti-critical race theory, even though we've seen so many videos of black parents coming uh, to the forefront and fighting against this and videos that have gone more viral than any others. But we won't put the black parents in there. Because it doesn't support the narrative. It doesn't make it look good. No. Yeah. I just got an important news. Los Angeles County will remove its indoor mask mandate for people who are fully vaccinated against COVID. Oh, wow. So. Fully vaccinated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wink, wink, Going to the grocery store, gentlemen. fully vaccinated. <laughs> Stick me up with I read a it was, couple doses. I read it that was going to affect Friday, but only at places that check for vax passes. Uh, so you can take your mask off after you've been vax checked in a restaurant. Well, the grocery store. The grocery store doesn't check it already, but they'll. Well, no, but I, I mean for I your mask, you're supposed to wear mask one. Mandate there. I don't know. I don't wear it anyway. So <laughs> anyway, say, so, Lovey, I went into a cake shop yesterday, and I went. I was not wearing a mask. I wa- I went in, and uh, I started ordering. And this girl looks at me, and she's like wearing her mask below her nose, and she goes, "Are you Amala?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's me." And she starts freaking out. She's like jumping up and down, and in between her jumping up and down, she's like, "I promise I wouldn't be wearing this normally." <laughs> She's like, they make me do it. And she was the sweetest girl ever. She was so kind. So shout out to that girl. I don't remember what her name is, but you'll be seeing me again because I love that cake shop. So Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, girl, I, I was getting a burger from a food truck yesterday and she knew who I was. She had a mask on too. And then like, as she recognized me, and then you, then it goes below her. Right, right. Well. Then she's, she's like, like, oh, a little it's Will. Yeah. Embarrassed. <laughs> like, oh, Guys, if you see me in person, take the mask off. Okay, please. <laughs> mm-hmm. I also don't take pictures with people who have masks on too. You got to take You don't take on. pictures with people who have masks on? No. You have to take the mask <laughs> That's off. That's an interesting rule. Yeah. No, you got to take the mask off for a picture. Well, yeah. It, well, I'm sure, I've taken a few. I, someone's going to like find <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, you're going to find it and be like, yeah. Will Witt's a liar. Yeah, Will Witt. <laughs> Exposed. No, I, but I, I do my, Fact checkers, I try my confirm. best to make sure. Well. Uh, well, guys, I was out at the grocery store the other day. Yeah. And people left me alone. So. <laughs> <laughs> they probably were like, oh, he's so famous. Yeah. I don't want to mess You're yeah, like, exactly. yo, Travis, what's up? <laughs> yeah. What up, Tylenol? The last time um, I was at the grocery store, I was checking out. I was, I was figuring out or swiping my stuff in self-checkout, no mask on. And this lady, double mask, looks at me and she's like, where's your mask? And I'm like, not on. <laughs> and then I just kept checking out my frozen pizza. <laughs> and, uh, Owned. Back. Wow. Owned. Wow, lib. wow, wow. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Now, one last story before we get into overrated, underrated. Uh, We've been talking a lot about the Great Reset and this sort of globalist agenda to get us all under one, one singular power that's built uh, with stakeholders. They get to decide what you can and cannot do with your life and that by 2030 you will own nothing and you will be happy about it. That is a quote from the World Economic Forum themselves, the the arbiters of the Great Reset. Now, we we watched during the Canadian protests, the Freedom Convoy, uh, Emergency Act go into effect, and Canada saying, you know, we're going to be watching your financial transactions, and if anything goes towards support of this protest, we will be freezing your bank accounts, no transactions, no credit card, no debit card, no nothing. Uh, And within that sort of talks about digital currency and digital wallets. And a lot of people say, well, 
you're just a conspiracy theorist. Nobody's moving towards a digital wallet that they can control uh, based on the whims of the government. Here is President and CEO of Canadian Bankers Association and their video talking about their move towards a digital wallet. Revolutionary innovation that will transform the way Canadians authenticate themselves online and protect their identity. Digital ID. All of us are living in a digital world, but we're tethered to an analog model of how we identify ourselves. Memorizing countless online passwords, carrying government-issued licenses, plastic cards, and more. Digital ID is a way for Canadians to identify themselves to government, businesses, and each other electronically, with ease and rock-solid security, without the need to present physical documents. One interconnected network. A federated digital ID ecosystem developed in collaboration with Canada's best and brightest talent from our banks, telecommunication companies, law enforcement, and government. It would have the power and security to store every Canadian's electronic identity and attributes. And it would unlock countless opportunities for Canadians to verify who they are safely, quickly, and securely, while only revealing the information necessary for each transaction. A fast, easy, and secure way to bank, sign up for government services, renew driver's licenses or health cards, shop, travel, and more. Canada's banks are perfectly situated to help lead the creation of a federated digital ID system between government and the private sector. The World Economic Forum agrees that banks and financial institutions should lead the path forward for digital ID. Banks are highly regulated and trusted. They have advanced cybersecurity and privacy technology, and they have the infrastructure to operate provincially and nationally. Banks are also at the forefront of working with fintech startups who are bringing revolutionary mobile and online products and services to Canadians. Digital ID can help consumers navigate between these apps and programs with trust and confidence, knowing their ID is protected at all times. Ooh. Let's just pause there. So many different layers to that. And in case you were going to watch that video and go, there's no way that's inspired by the World Economic Forum. He gave you a quote from them and told you that the World Economic Forum sees this as your future. We all know Klaus Schwab, Great Reset, fantastic. And fintech also, which was largely the driver in the Emergencies Act that was watching the Canadian Freedom Convoys transactions. They're on board as well, ladies and gentlemen. Move towards your own digital ID. And this is something that people have been talking about and being called conspiracy theories for for, uh, conspiracy theories, uh, for a long time. During the COVID crisis, when that just got announced in the U.S., and you saw them run with this HR COVID relief bill. In the beginning of that COVID relief bill, and you can go and look it up on the government website or pull up the bill yourself, go to the fourth page. It talks about a digital wall wallet for COVID relief. Why would we need a digital wallet for COVID relief? And all of that controlled by the Federal Reserve and given to you as an individual with your own Fed account, where everything, your identification, all of your transactions can be tied to you and the U.S. government for their viewing pleasure. Oh, this makes it so they can shut you down at any time. Anytime. Just like they did, they're doing to people in Canada right now. If your government has access to your bank and it's all online, then they can say, oh, we don't like your political opinions. Your bank is shut down. You know, mm -hmm. people who are donating to truckers right now are having their bank shut down. People who are donating to truckers in the Freedom Convoy who couldn't afford groceries and because they were trying to help people get food to eat, now they're getting their bank accounts shut down. Yep. Right? And this isn't any sort of conspiracy theory. I mean, Germany's been talking about this for for months and months. You know, this isn't something new. I mean, they wanted to do the digital passport, the digital ID for a long time, right? A lot of the people in the European Union have been talking about this. So definitely not a conspiracy theory. Something very there out in the open. And even if the COVID stuff is ending and the vaccine passport and all this kind of stuff will be coming to a close, I hope. I think the narrative's collapsing. This is still the next plan forward. And it's, it's economics and still going to happen. Yep. And they will tell you, oh, we're doing this because it's more sustainable because technology is more sustainable than the paper dollar. Don't you want to save trees <laughs> with this? It's going to be so much easier. Everything, all of your information, the entirety of who you are as a person can be accessed with the click of a button. Wouldn't you want all of that in your back pocket? And by your back pocket, I mean uh, to, to the whims of the government. Wouldn't you want us to be able to help you with that just so we can get every citizen on this one 
perfect national network. And then when we get multiple nations doing it, we can link those and become a globalist network. And the stakeholders can control that and oversee everything you're doing. And it's really interesting. We have countries like China that watch people's financial transactions and then put that into a social credit score. Wouldn't that be great too? So that you can know what your fellow citizens are buying with their money. And then you can judge them based off that. And then you can get your very own ESG score based on that. And that credit score can dictate whether or not you can buy a house. Oh, that house will be owned by BlackRock anyways. You know, it's just uh, levels and levels and levels and levels and levels to, to this. Yeah, I'm sure teddy bears and Barbies are less sustainable than AI robots replacing toys and babysitters <laughs> for children. But these are the same people who want that too. They want you to just have everything be so digital and decentralized or more like centralized in that way. That's right. all technology based. Uh, the technocrats are the worst people. The transhumanism, the technocrats, the modernity, all that. This is the worst. This is the fight of our time, really. I think that's everyone a, should read Joe Allen's Substack. If any, if you guys don't read Joe Allen's Substack, everyone should be subscribed to him. He's fantastic on all this stuff. I'll check that. Another thing to check out is um, my, I don't know how to say his name, Majid Nawaz or something. Mm -hmm. Was just on Joe Rogan's podcast, and and um, toward the latter half of it, they really get into this stuff. But I think the will to your point, um, framing it as centralized versus decentralized for our future um, is a great way to think about like how to fight this stuff because all of this, these innovations, the digital ID of what it, that allows the powers that be to do is to have a centralized place where they have all your data, they have all your yes. information, um, and that's what they're going to do. And and this is the next evolution of uh, a communist sort of order, because um, in this new communist utopia, it'll be a world of equity where if you, everyone is going to be um, buying the electric vehicles to get their score right and, and uh, being through the, all the diversity trainings, and you have mm -hmm. to check all those boxes in, in order to have this utopia. And if you don't, they're not going to throw you into a physical gulag, they're just going to cancel you. They're going to let you not be able, you'll be in a digital gulag where you're yeah. not going to be able to use your credit card or buy a house or, you know, uh, participate in society in any meaningful way because you'll effectively be a non-person. And China can basically already do this with their COVID pass. You have either like a red light or green light when you, mm -hmm. when you try to go into a, a restaurant or anywhere. And if you, if you can't show that your government issued QR code or whatever is a green light, then you, you got to go home, dude. Right. And you, you know, you can live that in have, Europe now. This is yeah. Western Europe too, where you have the QR code for the stuff. It's not the red light, green light thing, but it's it's a QR code essentially the same way. It has to be a QR code. You can't just, you know, have some one of your buddies print out a COVID vaccine card and fill it out as your doctor, you know, and mm -hmm. take a picture of it. You got to they got the QR code at all the places that you go to. That's scary stuff. Why do you think the government and the IRS is coming after your crypto stuff? They hate the word decentralized. They want to mm -hmm. know what you're doing. They hate anonymity. They don't want you to have any sort of power over your own finances or, or any of your transactions or what you buy or, or how you participate in our economic system. It, it's so utterly clear. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's anti-individualism. It's anti-freedom. It's collectivism. Anti yeah. Yep. On that <laughs> most depressing note, <laughs> we're gonna play over under. You guys submitted your random uh, artists, movies, thoughts, <laughs> ideas, books to my Instagram at the Amalepanovi, at the Will Wit, at Taylor Trandall, and I've collected them for you guys, and we are going to rate them. But before we get into that, I want to let you guys know tomorrow after the show on the Will and Amala Live channel, we will be doing a continued live stream. So we're gonna end on PragerU, move over to Will and Amala Live, and stay there and do uh, a personal Q&A with all of you guys right after the show for about 20 to 30 minutes. So you guys are going to want to make sure you're watching and subscribed to the Will and Amala live channel rather than PragerU. And okay? notifications on. And mm -hmm. notifications on. Turn the bell on. on. Make sure that you got your settings, that notifications are on for live videos so that you can make sure that you don't miss when we upload. Absolutely. Now, over under number one from Grace Lynn Maria, Justin Bieber. <laughs> Overrated, <laughs> Overrated, I guess. Overrated, underrated? Overrated, underrated. I don't know. Is he still, like, that popular? I feel like uh -huh. he's kind of... I don't know. He's still very popular. He's, he's past his, his peak of popularity. I don't um, know. I think he's still very, very, very popular. The, the Purpose album was, was underrated. <laughs> okay. I that was a while it. ago, but yeah. <laughs> we'll take it. I don't know all the new stuff. Or the uh, old stuff. Baby Baby, he was overrated. Okay. Because he was just this, who's like, who's this little kid? Okay. And his new stuff was like, okay, this guy can actually yeah, do something. Yeah, it was like, now he's a man. Yeah, now he's a man. I, I half liked his newest album, so I'll give it, I'll give him overrated for now. But he has immense potential and he's a very great artist, fantastic voice. So uh, I, I like Justin Bieber. Will, <laughs> you have any strong thoughts about Justin Bieber? Who's Bieber? Justice no. Bieber? <laughs> Nothing Justice too strong on, on Justin Bieber. Okay, so are you a, fen a fence sitter on the over under or you have? You know, this is a hard game. <laughs> 
Because I'm not always over or under. I know. It's not easy. Just, it's uh, appropriately I'll say rated. Over. I'll you'll, say over. You'll say over? Yeah. Okay. Will gets down to beauty and a beat. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't love even that. know what that is. Uh, from C underscore M underscore J, Chick fil A, overrated or underrated? Over. Over. Overrated. Immediately. Over. What other fast food chain gives you the type of service you get at Chick fil A? In and out. No. In and out doesn't have time to give service. you service. They're just like boom, 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 boom. We have a billion people. Yeah, and people even in with line that limited time, the, they're so the quick. few seconds I have are fantastic. Yeah, they don't. They never. They don't tell you it's their pleasure to serve you. Well, that, I don't need them to lie what, to me and tell me that right. they're serving me <laughs> in the South. Microwaved waffle fries. The Chick Fil A's out here. So maybe you guys just have a tainted view of Chick Fil A. If you go to Chick Fil A in like Georgia or oh, Tennessee, oh no, they're super nice. They'll like come around and have an old lady give like asking you if you want a refill. I'm like, this is a fast food restaurant. This like has a server. This is right. Crazy. That's right. not so what nice. I want. That I'm just exactly talking about the food itself. It's overrated. Yes. Food. No, the food no. is overrated. The food is. It's great value. I don't know. I'm a. I'm gonna say. You're Chick Fil A Underrated. I'm a Chick Fil A stand. Okay, I so will, will and I are over, you're nah. under. Nah. Okay, <laughs> next nah. one. Nah. Didn't expect such passion. Uh, from M. Pitt, Apple products. We all love have them. Apple pie. <laughs> love apple pie. We all have our apple products. I mean, I feel I like mean, right they're, now they're, they're just coasting off of the legacy of Steve Jobs. Uh, and right. And haven't really done that much to innovate. But they do still make objectively superior products to just about anything that's out there as yeah, far as like true. your iPhone is concerned. So it's definitely true. And their whole ecosystem, it just it's tough to beat, sadly. So under? Are we under even though they're under. spying on us? Yeah. I under. Guess. If I have to be honest. You know, you have to be honest. You have to be intellectually honest. We are all using Apple products right now. Literally there's like three Apple products right in front of me. <laughs> uh over or underrated from Chad Wankinson. I don't believe that's your real last name, and if it is I apologize. Stud. <laughs> UFC. Overrated. Underrated. Underrated. Overrated. Underrated. Okay, give your hot take. Will. No, I Without can't say giving it. your hot take. I can't say my hot take. Will does not. I'll, I'll say it in nicer terms. Will does not like the wrestling aspect of UFC. I think it's uh, emasculating. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I, no, we have this argument every time UFC comes up, and Will is so wrong. If you're secure in your masculinity, you can watch two sweaty men wrestle. <laughs> all over Listen, I just don't find it entertaining. It's okay? so entertaining. I don't find two men wrestling entertaining. What about what if it was boxing? Would you be like, this is. Yes, I like boxing. Boxing is terrible. No, I like boxing. Boxing is the boxing, worst. boxing is much more masculine. UFC is just so all-encompassing. It's based like the the institution itself. You is can based. actually tell who wins and loses in UFC like way more often than in boxing. Boxing, it's like all, it's all this technicality stuff, and the right, scores right. are always BS. It's just like much prefer boxing to UFC. Everything I about UFC is fantastic. It. It feels weird to me. It feels great. I bet Love it does. <laughs> when you grow up, you'll get over it. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> when you grow up, you'll. Anyways, uh, underrated. Underrated. Overrated. Uh, oh, wow. So Unbelievable. This is why Jorge Masvidal wouldn't interview with you. Yeah, this is exactly I just hate the her. argument. I, I'm sure people in the comments right now, I say, UFC is overrated. Everyone's in the comments like, I bet you couldn't fight a UFC fighter. They'd beat you up right now. I'm like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I could beat any of these people up. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying I don't like it. And that it's, I don't find it very- It's valid. Masculine. So, under, under, over. Next, Nicole Kidman, Peyton Rain, 2715. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, uh, what is Nicole Kidman I've never thought about it. Like? Yeah. You've never thought about You don't know what Nicole Kidman looks like? I don't remember. Oh. Moulin Rouge. Uh, oh, underrated. Pretty Little Lies. Underrated. underrated. Nicole Kidman's awesome. I like her personality. She's married to uh, Keith, Urban. Keith Urban. Cute couple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, underrated. I'm going to say overrated. She's a great actress, but I don't know. She's okay. been in so much random stuff. It's just kind of like. Fair enough. Next. Underrated. Cookie dough. Smith Team Six. Underrated. <laughs> Eating cookie dough. Underrated. Underrated. Overrated. I think it's gross. Underrated. Underrated. Really? You guys nice like all the little warning labels? It's like, dude, I'm gonna eat this cookie dough. I don't <laughs> care if you say it's but gonna wait, give me salmon. Would you go to like the it. the shops that like are cookie dough shops? Like they only sell cookie dough. Like, no, are, are you that type of person? You buy a package no, in the yeah. at the grocery store and just yeah, eat it. Yeah, I'm just. You'd rather eat raw cookie dough than a cooked cookie. Yes. 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 Oh yeah. yeah. Cooked cookies are terrible. I hate cooked cookies. What? People always burn them. They burn them. They're I mean, terrible not tasting. I hate when they're crispy. The dough is just so much better. Yeah, the dough is good. Wow, you guys are both fired. This is totally overrated. Totally underrated. overrated. Moving on. 
Uh, from Sabrina Cosmos. Oh, wow. Disneyland. Sabrina. Overrated. Overrated. Sadly, I have to say overrated, too. Did you see they just updated their, they do this parade every year in the spring, and it's got this patriotic float, and they canceled the patriotic float that has a U.S. flag on it. And they're replacing it with, like, their new... Pride flag? No, no, like, what's their new movie with the Latino characters and stuff in it? And... Encanto. Encanto, yeah, it's like that. Don't know what that is. But whatever. New movie. Not that I'm anti Encanto, but you know. Whatever. I don't know what that is. Um. But yeah, I, I went to Disneyland recently and uh, we did all the, like the old school rides and stuff, and it's just. I mean, if I was a kid, I'd better like be awesome. Kids, yeah, like I'll take my kid yeah, there or whatever, but like. Don't go kid, to Disneyland like... if you're not a child. Like I take Disneyland awesome. is for children. But not a fan of Disney adults. No. It seems. I'm also not a fan of amusement parks or roller coasters. Oh Me my neither. Gosh. I don't like amusement parks either, but uh, yeah, Disney Guys, adults are a joyless. strange subject. I like, no, I like Universal better, but I canceled my membership because they require Vax Pass this year. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, Tragic. I don't like any of that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm so oppressed. Waiting in Victims. lines. Homeschooling. Underrated. 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 As long as you're doing it right. Like if you're, you know, you know how to actually teach children, I would hope. You'd homeschool your kids. Underrated for sure. More people yeah. should homeschool. More people should homeschool. I was partially homeschooled. Apparently the government's going to start coming after homeschoolers. Like they have to know like everything that you're doing and stuff and you still have to meet these regulations. So it's yeah, going to be Parents can't know what, what public school teachers teach in their classrooms, but the government needs to know what you're teaching your kid in your own home. Right. Exactly. So wow. stupid. You should be able to do whatever you want. Really should. Pro homeschooling. America. Underrated. America. Country music. The name means princess. Submitted. Um, underrated. Over. Underrated. Over. Wow. Underrated. Over. Why? Because it sucks. <laughs> That's such a cliche. Take. It's such a cliche. No, take. listen. Country music now is terrible. It's terrible. Wow. It's soulless. It's. There's vapid. still some good stuff. There's out there. still some really Basically, good country almost, singers. Almost all music now is just not very good. It's true. It's, it's true with so, movies. And it's true with movies. It's true with art. It's true with music. Uh, and country music fits the bill of that to a greater degree what? than most of than even other music. So yeah, country music right now is terrible. I love old country music. Chris Christopherson, there's, there's some Willie stuff. Nelson, The Highwaymen, Dolly Parton. I mean, all the Twy Twiley. I mean, we go way back. I love that kind of stuff. But modern. you get this modern stuff. It's garbage. It's what just, country artist do you like, Lamala? Luke Combs, Morgan yeah. Wallen, Carly Pierce. I think she is fantastic. Tennille Arts Terrible. is fantastic. You haven't even heard probably half of what I just said. Oh, <laughs> My guilty pleasure is Sam Hunt, but uh, oh yeah, I'm he's like, like poppy country. But Chris Stapleton is awesome. He's Chris such a Stapleton's he's like the embodiment amazing. of country music. Are you kidding me? Um, oh my gosh, his voice. I'm blanking. Feathered Indians. Feathered Indians. Tyler Childers. Are you kidding me? And you, uh, yeah, country music. It's just such a vibe. It's so, so good. America. Tyler Childers is one of the best country writers. Just Jeez, amazing. Uh, even even through like looking through old country to modern country, he's a fantastic uh, singer songwriter. Amazing country music. Amazing on. imagery. You can't listen to ten rounds of Jose Cuervo and not just feel the vibe. Oh. I need ten rounds. I've of never Jose heard of that. Cuervo I bet if Will listened to Tyler Childers, he'd be like, "Oh, this is good." No. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. He wouldn't. Now he wouldn't because you said that. Yeah, it's because I said no, that. No, I listened to it. I know what this. Does I would show him Tyler Childers, and he'd be like, "I didn't even know that was from the modern day." That's, That's what would true. happen. That's you would true. not be able the to discern. The production is too clean. You mm -mm. can tell. Titanic from EWSBSK. Overrated. Overrated. Underrated. Wow. Overrated. I love Titanic. I watched it for the first time like this past year with my wife. She made me watch it. And I didn't hate yeah. it, but I was also like, I never want to watch that again. What? This is my unrealistic <laughs> it was so love sappy. expectation. It was so it was sappy. sappy. I this thought it was my... like an epic, you know, yeah. like James Cameron epic type movie. And no, it was it's really a sappy. love thing. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's so, it's so cute and amazing and good. <laughs> Perfect description. I, I guess it was just like expectation. Like I was all excited about this like historical, you know, period piece and getting immersed in like 1910 culture and uh -huh. seeing like this epic ship and learning about the history of it. And then it was just getting to whoa, this, whoa, like, whoa. love story and all that stuff was kind of the background. Yes. Interwoven into Titanic is a lot of historical fact, by the way. A lot of the characters are actual historical figures who were present on the Titanic. Yeah, but it was like that stuff was an afterthought. Well, that's well, even it's if a the romance Titanic... movie. The fact that they even put any thought into making it historically accurate is I mean, very it's impressive. It's better than they would have done today. Everyone would have been, you know, black trans and yeah. you know, all that stuff. <laughs> Hate me like one of your French trannies. <laughs> oh no, but it's the, it, it's not historically accurate because 
Titanic never happened. Oh, okay. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Titanic we need to cut never, the show. Titanic never crashed. We need to end the show right now. It, it's in Antarctica with it, Hitler and Elvis. It's in Australia, which doesn't exist. Yeah. Until then. <laughs> no, I don't know. Titanic might not have... Uh, uh, a, it's a, a nice fantastic place. movie. I'm upset with Rose for the door thing, but everything else is great. Great movie. Underrated. Okay. I cannot believe both of you Over. called this overrated. Wow. Over. And it's got Leonardo DiCaprio. You are, you're obsessed with Leonardo I DiCaprio. No, I love Leo. I love Leo. This is just libelous mm -hmm. slander. Anyways, guys, that's overrated, underrated. <laughs> I answered Did each it. one perfectly. <laughs> yeah, sure. Like always. Who knew I would have all the right yeah. answers? Yeah, yeah, who knew? Who knew? Never been wrong in my life. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We are going to be back tomorrow. And like I said, make sure you're watching and subscribed and you have the notification bell turned on for the Will and Amla live channel because tomorrow we're going to be doing an exclusive Q&A after the show only on that channel. So those will be the only people who get to see it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow, 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. And if you'd like to listen to us, go to Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. Give us a follow there and a five-star review. And we will see you all tomorrow. Peace, guys. Or if we get here, based on the Ukraine crisis. Yes, yeah. maybe not. Depends. Yeah, if we're late tomorrow, it's because of the Ukraine crisis. Absolutely.